Welcome back to Men and Motors, and today you join me with the MG ZS EV. First impressions of this car are rather good. It comes with a very pretty, futuristic looking snout. It's got a jacked up ride height. These lovely 17 inch alloy wheels that are not alloy wheels, but they are underneath, which I'll show you very soon in this video. Bit quirky, but there's reasons behind that and I'll get into it. You get these lovely little chrome accents across the bottom, a massive MG badge. And I mean, that's almost as big as a saucer for putting a cup on, but I like it. It's in your face. This is radar technology that gives you all the collision prevention assist and all that jazz. Mirrors, nice huge roof rails that are aluminium and stain free because some of these do go a bit tatty over time but I think these look rather robust so you can always put them on. A massive huge panoramic roof which I'll show you from inside the car because I'm quite impressed by it. But all in all, I think it's quite a pretty EV and from the price point, this car is £33,450, which sounds a lot of money, but I think it's really cheap in comparison to its competitors where most EVs are around the 40 to 44 to £50,000 mark. You're getting into a battery car for a lot less and for a lot less, you would expect a lot less, but this car has some tech on it and we'll get into that when we take a look inside. As standard, you get 17 inch alloy wheels, but they're not alloy wheels because they've got a very, very strange cladding. And once it's removed, you're actually left with an alloy wheel. Now, there's two ways you can go about this. One thing I don't agree with is when you do order this car, it says on the spec sheet, it comes with diamond cut alloys. Apologies about the black hands. And to me, they're not diamond cut. If they just slip the word look in there, then it's diamond cut but it's not all bad. You do have to hand it to MG because especially when I grew up getting your first car, if you couldn't afford alloy wheels, you'd put wheel trims on and you could just tell them a mile off. You could tell if somebody had spent the money on cheap wheel trims or they had the money for alloy wheels. Now, if you hadn't have landed on this video and seen me do this, I guarantee you wouldn't have thought that those wheels are plastic. And it's not all bad, like I say, because there is some added benefit with this. If you scuff that, you can quite easily replace it and it's not gonna cost you the value of a full alloy wheel refurb. But the main benefit of this is aerodynamics and that saves battery and range. But let's face it, having these wheel trims isn't really a deal breaker. And quite frankly, most people just won't even care. But I do, because I'm a bit weird like that. It just doesn't sit quite right with me having plastic trims over alloy wheels. Trims used to go over steel wheels, not alloys, but I have to hand it to MG. It does pull it off really well. And unless you go poking and prodding, you're just not gonna know. Boot space is rather large. It's 460 liters with a nice little cubby underneath your electric charging cables. However, if that's not enough, and you come inside the car and pull a little lever to drop the seats and you do the same on the other side, you end up with 1,100 litres to fit me in. And to be fair, it's rather comfortable because there's a staggering view that way. And at night, you can look at the stars through this massive panoramic roof. And whilst we're on the subject of boot space, we may as well see if this car has any frunkage. And if you don't know what I mean by that, Click up here and head over to our review of the Kia EV6 to find out exactly what it is, but also what my frustrations are and how it can be drastically improved. Anyway, let's pop the bonnet and take a look. And no, there is no frontage. There's just a lot of electrical wizardry going on. So if you want to take a look, come a bit closer. This is what would normally be known as an engine bay. And with my expertise, I'd be able to point around this and tell you what does what, but Apart from coolant, washer fluid and brake fluid, I literally have no idea how this works. It's just cables, ECUs. Oh, we do have a normal car battery, but a motor maybe? It fascinates me how that makes this car propel at such speed. Wow. Stepping inside the car, you're greeted by this lovely, premium finish and when I say premium it is just that 
I have been in far more expensive cars that do not feel as good as this. The leather on the steering wheel and the chunkiness and how solid it feels is fantastic. You get this lovely fake carbon look leather here and it's not just like smooth to touch, it's actually quite soft. You get it all over the dashboard as well and when you press it, it's very, very cushioned. It feels luxurious. You've got a lovely little grab handle down here, some really nice trim. The leather is just absolutely everywhere. And I do have to say, it smells fantastic in this car. You really do get that smell of expensive luxury and premium quality, which is something that took me by surprise because with MG being a brand that's died and revived and come back God knows how many times, and is now owned by Shanghai Automotive, I did think that the quality would be a compromise, but they really have spent the money on areas where the driver and the passengers touch. And I mean, you get a 10.1 inch screen here and believe me, every inch matters. It's huge, it's glossy, it's got a lovely feel to it. And a few people have said it's rather clunky. And to be honest with you, I've had no issues with it so far. I think it's fantastic. It does feel beautiful. One feature I really love in this car is this massive panoramic roof. And it is absolutely huge, as I shall now demonstrate. If I press this button, it's tinted as well, by the way, to stop the sun getting to you. And you should see my face light up with joy. But honestly, just check this. If I just slide the electric seat back as well, you'll like this. The roof is so big that you can actually get way right up in the gods and poke your head out and just appreciate the surrounding views. You probably think I'm trying to replicate the scene from Pretty Woman, but I'm really not because that wouldn't be legal. But you get the gist. With that said, I think we need to talk about the back because space isn't compromised in this car. Space in the back is absolutely perfect. I'm six foot three and a bit, but I like to tell people I'm six foot four, because as I said, every inch matters. And I do not feel squashed or squished in at all. In fact, there's loads of room to my left with a nice ledge with your electric windows that you can control from here. You have a USB two socket there and a USB-C socket here, with some lovely little vents to keep you nice and cool. Armrest comes down with cup holders in don't really understand why that is. I think that would be rather irritable. Maybe it's to stop you knocking the drinks forward. I don't know. But the seats are really comfortable, plenty of room, lovely flat floor because we've got no exhaust and no transmission going to the back with it being electric. So if you sit in the middle, it is a bit compromised for someone of my width and height. But all in all, I think it's a really premium finish and it would make a fantastic family car. With that said, onto the road test. The numerical specifications for this automotive electric vehicle are as follows. It has 173 bhp, or 176 ps if you prefer the p's. It has a 208 foot-pound of torque. It has a 0 to 60 of 8 seconds dead, and a top speed of 108 miles per hour. Now, let's face it, if you're going to buy a car like this, you're really not buying it for performance. You're buying it for a family vehicle, something that you can go on the occasional holiday, and quite frankly, an A to B. That doesn't mean that this car isn't great though. It is a fantastic family car. The only thing it does lack is being fun and alive. It's not a very alive car to drive. It just simply gets you from places in comfort and in a bit of style. But when you compare it to other EVs, like the Kia EV6 or the Ionic 6, two very, very different cars with a very big price tag, it just feels different. The EV6 and the Ionic 6 are so fun to drive, and I think that's because when you do flick the accelerator pedal, you do jolt forward. In this, there's not so much, it's a bit laggy, but it's a budget EV, and it's to get you out of the world of internal combustion. With that said, the 198 mile range has been okay so far, but it is getting colder this time of year. I have had the heaters on full blast and I have done quite a lot of motorway miles. Where this car really comes into its element is round town. And I said this with the last one, that is down to regenerative braking. When you simply let off the accelerator, there is resistance put on the motors, which then uses that kinetic energy to feed the battery ultimately extending the range and making it far more efficient. When you go on the motorway, you simply don't do a lot of slowing down, you just cruise. 
and with that there is no regenerative braking happening meaning that your range does drop a lot quicker especially if you have the heated seat on the heaters the air conditioning or the radio one thing i do really love is it comes with App apple carplay the problem is it's wired so you do have to use a cable it's not wireless it does have a wireless charging pad down here when you drop your phone on obviously it charges Big 10.1 inch surround screen like we mentioned before, very, very fancy. And when you wanna go into the climate settings, it does give you a 3D version of this cockpit that you're actually sat in. And if you wanna just navigate around it, you can just press the windscreen and the air comes on on the windscreen. If your feet are getting sweaty or your feet are getting cold, you press your feet and it transfers over to there and starts to heat your feet. I do think that is very, very nice and it does just look fancy and premium. You have three driving modes in this car. You have Eco, Normal and Sport, but to be quite honest, there isn't really a difference. Sport is a little better with a slight bit of throttle response being more agile and active. However, the thing you do notice is the steering wheel gets rather stiff to the point where it isn't enjoyable to drive anymore. But you can see why they've done it. If you just do want to give it a bit of a poke, you can do. There's another button down here that says KERS or K-E-R-S. If I had to hazard a guess at that, what that means, and I'm sure you guys will correct me in the comments, to my understanding, I think it stands for Kinetic Energy Resistance Service, possibly. <laughs> We'll drop a comment below if you do know what it means. But that basically controls the, um, the regenerative braking. The battery button literally just simply brings up the display to tell you what sort of battery status you're at. Currently, we're at 25% and I've got 39 miles left to go. It is dropping rather quick though due to the cold weather. So we will try and stop for a charge because it isn't the fastest thing to charge this car. It's, uh, it takes around 40 minutes on a rapid charger at 100 kilowatts. That is the max you can charge this car. You can't do it anymore. But I think it's aimed at plugging it in at home, but it does take 10 hours to charge the battery. And that's on a 32 amp charger where you should roughly get around 30 miles of range per hour. Now, obviously we're charging, it's getting expensive. For me to go and charge this at a rapid charger, I'm estimating it's gonna cost me around 40 to 50 quid. However, if you sign up to these incentives that BP Pulse offer, Ionity, you do get discount structures. I think for BP Pulse for around a tenner a month, you get 40% off your charging price, which is a fantastic incentive. But with incentives, at some point, surely they're going to disappear. And that's what worries me with EVs. I'm just not quite ready to make the jump yet. But if you're watching this video, you obviously are, and I'm hoping that I can help you make that decision. The MG ZS is absolutely loaded with cameras. There's one on the front, there's one under each wing mirror. There is one on the back and using all those cameras, it offers 360 degree view of the car. Now, most car manufacturers that have this feature, you simply get a panoramic bird's eye view of the car, but not with the MG. You can actually have all these different views of around the car when you're going to park up. Now, most people think that's a gimmick and it isn't quite useful, but it really is. I should probably talk to you about the screen in front of me. It's a rather fancy layout. On the left-hand side, you have miles per hour and you can change that to kilometers per hour if you do go abroad. On the right-hand side, you have a percentage dial and what that is, is how much force you are putting on the throttle. And I've found if you leave it at 35% and don't go above that, the battery really does last a long time. In the middle of those two clocks, you have this really fancy animation where it shows a battery in the center of the car. You've got the front wheels because this is a single motor and it's only front wheel drive. And every time you accelerate, it shows arrows going towards the wheels. And every time you decelerate, it shows arrows coming in off the wheels and back towards the battery. It's rather clever. Seats are very, very comfortable. They're very soft. They're a nice place to sit. However, I do have quite a large rear and what I am struggling with is the side bolsters at the bottom. They are quite narrow and they do dig in a little bit, but it's not something that's gonna stop you buying the car. I think you would get used to it over time. I drive a pickup truck on a daily basis and that's basically just a magic carpet. So it's not really a comparable, but it's just something that I've noticed and I wanted to highlight to you. Seats are electric on the driver's side, on the passenger side, they're just levers and mechanical 
again, it's not. It, you, you really have to look at the technology with that. If you have to sacrifice a passenger's electric seat to have blind spot assist and all this tech, then it really is a worthwhile investment. I really can't find anything bad to say about this car. I, I, there's a few things I would change. This little thing here, everything feels premium, but that just feels a bit baggy. But other than that, it is, it's a true vehicle for 33 grand. It's EV, modern technology, minimal servicing, by the way, minimal. Pads, discs, brake fluid, no oil to change, no cam belts to change what can go wrong most cars nowadays come with something called voice control and it's normally a bit pants but if you press this button here you're greeted by a very very lovely lady that likes to talk to you look at this i'm here open sunroof <laughs> how cool is that <laughs> wonder if she'll close it close sunroof there we go it works normally voice control is really really poor but it seems to be working on this car one thing i really love in cars is a sound system and it has to be good because your favorite song is 10 times better when you're blasting it in the car so to test it out let's see what this sound system's like with a song that i hope you'll all know it's actually quite good. Fun. To spend my life with a girl like you. Hopefully you enjoyed this review of the MG ZS and maybe it's even influenced you to actually go and make that decision and buy one. Do us a favour, hit subscribe, hit like, drop us a comment below with what you want to see next. But with all that said, I will see you very soon. Oh, and click up here to see some of our archive footage of MG many moons ago.